Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And in today's episode, we got a first story, which we haven't seen before. And then in the second part, we're moving on to a story we've covered previously, but with a new update to the P-Gate saga. The P-Gate saga is, is a story with escalating updates nearly an hour long there'll be a card up in the top right the little eye if you click on that it'll come out and you, you can watch the the full video because i'm only going to post the update today because i don't want to post an hour's worth of repeated content so make sure if you haven't seen the p gate saga and let me tell you it is something be sure to go over there get involved listen to that first so you're well prepared for that update and the link will be in the description as well and in the top comment thank you so much guys and let's get in to the first story now today's first story does come with an update from stubborn fiance who says me 25 female with my fiance 25 male arguing over our wedding budget which might end our relationship my fiance and i have been together for four years and everything has been great up until now we've always been in agreement about our lives and what we want for the future fiance's has always been one thing that we agreed on the most the monthly budget, not buying excessively, living within our means, and finances, including the wedding. He's always known from early on that I love big weddings and always wanted to have one, and that would be an area I would splurge a little on. He was always supportive of this and in agreement with me and said he'd like one too. In October, we got engaged and things were great until we started the wedding planning. We were just getting the basics done and mainly doing research into prices and we discovered that we didn't have quite as much money as we would like to have for a big wedding and we were both disappointed but started looking into how we could scale back and stretch our budget in the most efficient way possible. Then, in the beginning of November, my parents gave us a hefty chunk of money for the wedding and all the other expenses that go along with it, including the honeymoon and the engagement party and bridal shower all of the good stuff we weren't going to get to have on our budget and possibly even have some left over. The only things that we would have to pay for would be our bachelor slash bachelorette parties. We were insanely excited and grateful and my fiance even commented that now we could have the wedding of our dreams and went planning on our merry excited way. At Thanksgiving, my fiance went to visit his family on the opposite side of the country, but I wasn't able to go with him. When he came back from that trip, he seemed more standoffish about the wedding and pretty much stopped helping me plan it. When I asked him why, he said he was just tired and I let it go. Then when he got back into helping me plan it, he was suddenly against having a big wedding, despite what we'd previously talked about and planned. He said that having a large wedding seemed like an annoying waste of money, which was news to me because he'd always been excited about having said wedding. Then it progressed to him saying that having a big wedding would make his family uncomfortable and make them feel out of place because they didn't grow up with slash around lots of grand things. He also said that his family wouldn't be able to fly out for the wedding. So I proposed that we take some of the money out of the big wedding and have another much smaller ceremony and reception where his family would be comfortable and within a reasonable driving distance. He said, no, fuck that. Let's just have a smaller wedding to begin with. When I asked why, he would never give me a legit reason. He would always dance around the question and cause an argument that was off topic of the wedding. We stopped planning the wedding and things were pretty strained for the next little bit of time, up until Christmas. We flew out to see his family and they weren't very welcoming towards me at all. Christmas day was basically just them being condescending about the budget and wedding in general, including opening presents where they would make comments about if it was good enough for me, which was shocking because that's never been an issue in any interaction we'd ever had or in my life in general. The whole day just basically went like that. When we got back to our hotel, I asked my fiance what the fuck all of that was about. He pretended to not know for a while, but he told me that he went for Thanksgiving. He told them about the wedding budget and they said it was too much for a wedding and they didn't want to come because they felt it would be uppity, flashy and arrogant. When I asked him if he defended what was originally our choice, he exploded and told me that he felt the big wedding budget was materialistic and ridiculous. 
When I asked how it was materialistic, he said that it just was and that he was sick of my materialistic behavior. Again, I asked him what he meant by that and he said that me liking high-end stuff and getting my nails and hair done was materialistic behavior. This confused me too because while I like nicer things, it's never been a requirement and I don't demand that everything I have to be expensive and high-end and I don't care much about how much money a person has or makes or anything like that. Plus, when I do buy stuff for myself, it's from my own personal money in my own bank account that I deposit money in after all of the bills and necessities with my fiance have been taken care of. I've never once asked my fiance or anyone else to pay for any of that stuff and me spending money from that account isn't a regular occurrence whatsoever. My fiance even has his own separate account for things he wants and likes too. Then he jumped back to the wedding and said he finds it stupid and irresponsible to spend thousands of dollars on one day just to get a piece of paper that we could get at a courthouse. He also kept mentioning that we could spend the money elsewhere. When I asked what exactly he meant by elsewhere, he didn't have an answer and just kept saying we could spend it on better things like a new house or cars or something. We bought a nice house two years ago, so that argument was out. We each have nice running cars, so that was out and we can't have kids, so that's out too. And when I brought all of that up to him, he just stormed out. We're back home now and we haven't talked about it because every time I bring it up, he gets pissed and storms out the room and shuts me down. His behavior in this whole situation and lack of communication with me makes me nervous because something is going on, but I don't know what. If he keeps continuing this way, I don't want to get married to him because I don't know if our future would be like this, but with other things. It's not about not wanting the wedding, it's just his attitude and the way he's gone about everything. And as I said, we do have an update to this story as well, but this automatically feels like this is all coming from fiance's side of the family something's been said to him and that's why he's backing down like this i mean like op said he was in they were both insanely excited at the very beginning but then when he saw his family he came back and that's when he stopped helping you plan it so something was clearly said there and the first thing that comes to my mind about this is you know is op's family gave them a big chunk of money and i wonder if that family is embarrassed or or whatever that they can't contribute money towards the wedding as well it may not be embarrassment but along those lines and we've seen lots of stories like this where money changes the behavior of people and it seems like just one of those cases to me but sign says am i the only person who thinks it would be really rude to take money your parents gave you for the wedding and spend the majority of it on something else I know that there are a range of opinions on how much input paying for a wedding gives parents slash other parties the right to make decisions about the wedding details. But if I gave someone say $20,000 for the wedding and all the other expenses that go along with it, including the honeymoon and the engagement party and bridal shower, and they have a $5,000 wedding and spent $15,000 on a new car without consulting me or offering the rest back, I feel like I'd be a bit annoyed. I think you need to tell your fiance that whatever money your parents gave you that isn't spent on the wedding will be returned to them. I'd be interested to hear his reaction to that. Lordica says it sounds like his parents felt inferior because they couldn't contribute like your parents could and instead of accepting it graciously, they worked on your fiance and turned him against the wedding and you. This is about a hell of a lot more than a wedding. Return the money to your parents with thanks and call off the wedding for now. If you can't communicate about this, if his response to disagreement is to turn on you, I don't see how this is going to work. Redisaurus Rex says, your family chips in a lot of money. His family can't afford to chip in as much money. His family feels bad, but are unable to accept the fact that they are poor and can't match your family's financial contribution because that would make them feel like failures. His family is rationalizing other reasons for an expensive wedding to be a bad thing so that it becomes they won't chip in, not they can't chip in so they don't have to feel poor. His family's brainwashed your fiance. All of that is beside the point though, because the important thing here is that your fiance respects his family more than he respects you. Do you really want to play second fiddle to his family the rest of your life? Dragonflies Love Me says, the fact that he keeps storming out of the room when you try to talk about this is not good. It's not going to work in a marriage. He needs to grow up and talk about this. In a marriage, you are one unit. He needs to be able to join to someone like that to put the marriage first above all others. Can he do that? As an aside, let me just say that nice things are great. 
not only for their aesthetic appeal, but they often end up being cheaper in the long run because you don't have to replace them as often, or at all, to cheaply made things. You could take some of the wedding money and fly his parents in probably, but it sounds like they have turned him against you. They sound pretty effing weird to be honest. And one more from Fakey McFakerson who says, I would definitely put this wedding on hold. If it was your dream wedding and you shared that with him and he agreed, then something has happened. Him getting angry and refusing to discuss why he has done a 180 is concerning. Something happened over Thanksgiving for him to put you down. Cease communicating with you and refuse to back you up with his family. He allowed his family to be condescending and rude to you at Christmas and he just stood by. That concerns me the most. So now we're gonna move on to the first update to find out what happened next. So thank you to all who offered advice the last time. I took some suggestions and they definitely helped bring the situation to a point. About two days after I made the first post, my fiance and I got into a really huge argument and I figured out that he didn't want to send the money to his family. He came home and I told him that we're going to talk about what was going on and this time no amount of arguing was going to change the subject. As soon as I said that, we started arguing again and he kept telling me that the money should be used elsewhere. I told him that my parents gave us the money solely for the wedding and that any money we didn't use was going back to them unless they just insisted that we keep it. End of story. He demanded that we just ask my parents if we could keep the money and put it towards other uses. And I told him that I wasn't doing that and especially if he wouldn't even tell me what those other uses were. He finally broke, said that he felt it was wrong to have a big wedding when his family could use the money for more practical and useful things. When I asked him what those things were, he meant sending his brother to the college of his dreams out of state. He said that over Thanksgiving when he was with his family, he was telling them about the wedding and the money that my parents had given us, which really wasn't necessary and shouldn't have been discussed in the first place. And his family started telling him about the college his brother wanted to go to and how they couldn't afford it and felt really bad for limiting him then according to my fiance they began asking how he could go through with a wedding using all of the money that could be used to help pay for some of his brother's schooling and take some of the weight and stress off of their shoulders he started feeling guilty and they pointed the blame towards me and because he didn't want to feel guilty, he went along with it and basically agreed with them and told them that they were right when they said they didn't want to come to the wedding and support someone who didn't want to help them. Just conveniently leaving out the fact that I had no clue how bad their financial situation was and also that the wedding was a mutual decision. And he said that the reason he was so standoffish and kept lashing out at me whenever I tried to talk to him about it was because he felt bad he'd changed our plans without talking to me and let me take the blame for something that really shouldn't have involved the blame in the first place. When we started discussing why he didn't tell me all of this and apologize from the very beginning when it, all of it happened, he just said he didn't feel like it and was going to try and find a way that he could use some of the money while also giving us both the wedding we were content with. I was, and still am, furious that not only he was okay with throwing me under the bus, but also hiding huge expenses from me. So willing to change our plans without so much as mentioning it to me, and was willing to insult, berate, and hurt me to get his way. When I told him how I felt about all of that, he actually said that he was sorry about that, but was happy that he told me so that I could see his side and we could compromise by cutting back the wedding and take the rest of the money and put it towards his brother. I guess he felt like I would change my mind about everything now that he'd come clean about everything. But when I told him that the money was still absolutely going back to my parents, he got pissed again because they didn't need it anyways. We got into an even bigger fight about everything and we decided to call the wedding off indefinitely until we can sort through things. But right now, I'm not even 100% sure I want to go through with the marriage at all, especially if this is going to be what our future holds. Final update. Since the last update, my fiance and I were trying to resolve things and, and even got into two therapy sessions. And it seemed like things were looking up and we're on our way to repairing our relationship, even though it was a slow process. We went in for our third therapy session and started discussing in deeper detail more about his family and the money issues. We were talking through it and he still didn't understand why we couldn't just take the money my parents gave us and help his brother because it was technically a gift. When I told him again that we weren't using the money for anything other than the wedding, if we even have a wedding, and I suggested that we use our personal money if we're going to help them. 
He completely ignored the last part and started telling me how selfish my family was because we were unwilling to help his family. He's never asked for serious help for his family before. And when he even asked at all, I helped them. When I pointed the fact that all he had to do was ask, but he never did. He said that he shouldn't have to ask for help for our family, but that I should see that they were struggling and want to help them instead of having to be asked. When I told him that I couldn't read his mind, we got into a huge argument in the therapist's office and he stormed out in the middle of the session. I followed him out and we argued more in the car. Then when we got back to the house, we continued arguing and said that he fought so hard for his family because his brother was the last chance they had. When I asked what that meant, he said that I should be trying to help them too, as it would be the least I could do since his brother was basically their only chance at expanding the family, since I couldn't have kids. Then we got in a completely different argument about kids and how I can't have them, before we even started seriously dating. We talked about kids and before we found out that I couldn't have them. We both agreed that we didn't want them whether they were adopted or not. Then we found out that I couldn't have them for medical reasons and we talked about it again and we were both in agreement that we still didn't want them. Apparently, his parents have been pressuring him about that too. But again, instead of talking to me, he thought I'd change my mind later down the road. We got into a really awful argument, the worst one we've ever had and it got a bit physical. I kicked him out and we officially ended our relationship the day after. I'm not sure what we're going to do about the house situation. It's in my name, but he doesn't really have anywhere else to go. But I do know that our relationship is over for now, if not forever. And there was one relevant comment from OP who said, we both got physical with one another. He threw a glass at me, so I threw one back. And then he grabbed me and threw me on the ground and I kicked him to make him let go. We were both in wrong and it never should have happened. I just don't get what goes through someone's mind. You know, this big gift of money, if we're going to call it a gift of money, came in from the parents. And what goes through someone's mind saying, no, we're going to take that money and we're going to give it to my family. What the hell? And in these situations, I know it's all horrible, but I would love to know. I'd be really interested to know the level of manipulation from his side of the family that went towards him and how they went about it. I mean, it's all awful, don't get me wrong, but it'd be interesting to know how you can change someone's mind like that or convert someone's mind like that to try and get money, basically off another family to put towards yours. That's incredibly strange, but let me know your thoughts on this story in the comments below and let's move on to another story. Now, as I said, we have an update to the P-Gate saga. I'm not sure if you remember this story. It was a huge one, I think about 50 odd minutes or something like that, where Planets Ahead told their story to us about their, their family drama that was going on. And after every update, it, things just got worse and worse and the family was all over the place and all this kind of thing if you'd like to see all the previous parts to this because i'm not going to post them all in this video because <laughs> that'd just be insane there's a card at the top the little eye symbol if you click that it will open up and you can see the previous parts there so updates peeman tell no tales it's been a while since i've been here I even stopped writing unposted updates because i honestly didn't want to think about life or anything how are you all doing? How's the new year treating you? Hope you've all been well and healthy, that all your cats are being pet and your bladder's empty. I'll keep this update as short as I can. I've got a few comments and messages saying I unnecessarily write too much and take too long to get to the point, so I'm sorry about that, although it is not my job to keep you entertained with my life. I'm writing this because of the overwhelming amount of love and support I've received from many Redditors and the ones who have inquired about my well-being and asked for updates. So I guess if it's too long for your taste, feel free to stop reading at any point. My story has no impact on your lives other than for your entertainment. So truly, you can stay or go and I'll be none the wiser. Also, hi to the YouTube people. Shout out to Mark Narrations <laughs> for his lovely narration. It was sent to me by a Redditor and although it's super weird to hear my life read to me, I thought it was nice. I don't know the type of compliment you give to the narrator, but it was excellently narrated. God, it feels weird reading that. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. You do have a very soothing voice, and I'm glad if someone was going to bring the story over to YouTube, it was someone as kind as you. Tap in the chest there. The last time I wrote was just before the holidays, and I'll admit my holiday plans were not the brightest in hindsight. 
I know in my last update I said that I wouldn't just sit on the couch and wallow in self-pity, but take a wild guess at exactly what I did. I honestly wasn't up to the celebrating. My family is really into Christmas and happiness and joy and I didn't want to bring the mood down, so I told my dad I was spending it with a friend who recently lost her husband. She went out of state to be with his parents and I just stayed home with Tutia watching movies. Ted called me Christmas Day and for the very first time I didn't answer. Are you all super proud of me? I definitely felt you guys would be after so many of you agreed that I should cut him off completely, but please accept my baby steps. I just couldn't bring myself to go cold turkey from my best friend, even after everything that happened. He texted me later in the day to check in and make sure that I was all right, saying he saw my sister's photos on Facebook and noticed I wasn't there. Should I ask my sister to block him? He loves them and they love him. Before everything went down, he truly was an amazing guy. And even now, after everything, he's still doing his best. I don't know if it's how I write or when I write or maybe it's me being biased by our relationship, but Ted is not as horrible as some of you paint him to be. He's also going through some incredibly traumatic and having to face head on everything his family did is not easy. I sat on this text for a few hours thinking what to reply and honestly came up empty handed. I was not all right, but all in all, he's still the person who knows me best. The 10 years we spent together weren't wasted time. We didn't break it off because we fell out of love, but because it's what's best for both of us. You guys get to read my updates from a point of privilege in a sense. You are not the ones whose lives got destroyed and went from one happy family to being completely on your own. I had my family and you to fall back on, but Ted didn't. Some of his brothers hate him even more now because of all of this. He lost his best friend and little brother. He lost his partner. He lost Tortilla too. And even though it's a good riddance, he also lost his mum. It's easy to villainize him and think him some monster for hurting me because you only know my side of the story and the tidbits I share with you. But he's still a person. He also got incredibly hurt throughout this whole ordeal and he's human and he's bound to make mistakes even though I don't think us getting divorced will ever count as a mistake to him. I ended up just writing back something along the lines of wasn't up for a party so just stayed with Tortilla, Merry Christmas. And I guess he knew something was wrong and came to my park. He knows the overall area where I live and the lovely park that I frequent and he asked me to meet him, which I did. Yes, you can be less proud of my micro achievement that day, but once again, baby steps. We talked for a few hours. I didn't know he was spending Christmas by himself. Otherwise, I probably would have liked to spend Christmas with him, or at the very least, I would have invited him to my parents. A lot of you have insisted that cutting him off completely would be best, but I disagree. I might change my mind later on, but for now, I think we still need each other a little bit. Each day I do think I need him a little bit less, but that day I needed him, and some days he needs me too. I'd like to think we can be friends, but I know that long term, that might not be sustainable. At some point, he'll find an ex-partner, and they probably won't like me much. Or maybe we'll grow apart. Maybe one day, I'll hate him for everything that happened. But for right now, he's helped me in ways that others can't. It might sound stupid on my end, but I don't think anyone other than him truly understands who I am right now. I'm not the same person I was before everything went down. I'm not even the same person I was a year ago. Going through this whole thing with his family changed both of us a lot and not everyone gets it or understands why I'm not comfortable bringing the kids to the bathroom or why I had to go home sick when my boss gave me sunflowers on International Women's Day. I do think that we both lost parts of ourselves, that, that we are perhaps a bit too naive and we've both grown in ways neither of us expected to have to grow, but that has grounded us a bit. I've lived a very, very privileged and sheltered life and even though I lost some of the sunshine that filled me, I feel like this new shade has helped me connect with people a lot more and understand their struggles in a more empathetic way, or at the very least I'd like to think so. Maybe that's just what going to therapy does for you, in which case I definitely suggest everyone to go to therapy, P-Man or not. All in all, we're both doing a little bit better. Tortilla is doing great apart from a little health scare. She is per usual doing great. Our new place has a lot of windows, which means a lot of sunny patches, which she is enjoying thoroughly. 
Ted went no contact with most of his family and is currently low contact with B4 and B6. So I don't really have anything to tell you about Ash or the rest of the brothers other than B6, who is really sad that Ted is keeping his distance from him, specifically since he also cut off mostly everyone, but he says he understands and that he'd be there for him whenever he is ready. It was brought up quite a few times that what was already referred to as bullying was actually abuse. And I do think it's important to use that word when describing their childhood. I think precisely part of the problem that caused the House of Cards to come down was the dismissive way everyone went about it and how much they all, including Ted and Ash, downplayed it as either boys will be boys, brothers are like that, or simply, I thought it was normal. I think if any of the wives or I had known the extent of things in their childhood, perhaps a lot of different decisions would have been made. Of course, my ex-mother-in-law is a lot to blame for that, but well, I guess we've all learned from it. I don't think I'm ready to date yet. I think I need to learn to be alone first. I was with Ted since college and it's been quite some time since. I don't even think I know how to do a first date anymore, but I'm sure I'll be able to Google it whenever I get there. It's been weird adapting to solitude. I don't want to call it loneliness because sometimes it's nice, you know. I'll finish a book and close it and the place will be quiet and not in an eerie way, but somehow comforting. I've had to learn a lot, which made me realize how heavily I relied on others to help me with things that I always could have done myself. I changed the tire for the first time. It was a scary experience because my tire popped on the highway, but I did it. I learned that different plants have different care requirements after killing a bunch, but now I have a little basil that's doing great. I learned that I actually don't really care for action movies. The high speed and constant pressure is not something I enjoy. I learned to cook shrimp. Ted is allergic, so we never had any at home. Pro tip, don't forget to devy in your shrimp. Is that remove the main vein? I think it is. There are also things that I miss about being with Ted. I had to drive myself to the emergency room after missing a carrot with a knife, and I think that hospital should have valet options. <laughs> <laughs> Tatia had a health scare and being alone in the waiting room was truly awful. The death anniversary of a childhood friend came and went and he wasn't there to comfort me. I also really, really dislike mopping and I'm stuck having to do it myself. That's about it, I think. I haven't seen Ted since Christmas, though we still do text each other every so often and have called each other a few times, but we're learning to be apart without withdrawing all of our support at once. We're still healing I'm still healing, but I know I can confidently say that I can see a bright side when before it was just kind of living one day at a time. I don't know if that makes sense. Ted's birthday is coming up. I don't think I'll go see him, but I'll ask his friends to make sure he's not alone. I've been toying with the idea of adopting an elder cat for him. He's always felt so strongly about them, and I think it'd be a good idea for him, but I don't want to overstep. What do you guys think? Lastly, I want to thank you for your constant support and well wishes. You truly are an amazing community that shows a side of humanity that is truly beautiful. Of course, Reddit has its dark corners and mean people, but the majority of you are such a strong support system without even knowing me and the many others you have helped and I just feel like perhaps the internet is not so bad. I make sure to pay back and pass on all the kindness I have received from all of you and maybe one Redditor at a time, we can leave this place a little bit better than we found it. Right now, I think this is as good as a final update as any. A relative content ending with a hopeful future. I don't know, maybe I'll surprise you in a is it Ali Gilmore Girls and give you a year in the life sometime in the future. But for now, I can say that everything will be okay. Head pets for all of those who want them intended for cats, but I don't discriminate based on species. And my love for everyone from my mending heart, Ellie and Tortilla. Now, firstly, I'd like to say thank you to Ellie and Tortilla, of course, for giving us this final update, this final conclusion to this story. And I know this one was mainly about how you're doing now, how your feelings are now. And it's one of my favorite, and I hate saying the word favorite because you know, you've been through so much. It seems like the wrong word to be using, but hearing raw feeling and raw emotion and and the way that you talked about the situation in this update feels like very raw, very real, you know. A lot of the times you get to the end of 
uh, someone's story and it feels like, you know, they've left their family, they've cut off their family, they've gone no contact, they've divorced, whatever they've done, you think that's it, it's all roses from now on because you don't hear nothing else apart from that. And But to read this, and you know, we all knew it before, but to read it, is, as I said, it's very raw that it's a healing process. It takes a long time to to get back out there again. It's a slow process to build yourself back up, to heal. And holy moly, Ellie, you have been through a time. But now I'm going to turn it to you guys. And remember, if you haven't seen the previous parts of this story, it is, it's something else. Ellie, I tell you. <laughs> Click the little eye at the top, which is a card, and it will take you to the previous video. It's one episode, one huge episode full of Ellie's story. I will also link it in a pinned comment and in the description as well for you to click on. And once again, thank you so much for your love, time and support. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah.